Okay, before we get into actually programming this gun, we're going to talk a little bit about the eye that's in it. Now, for those of you that's not familiar with what an eye is, take this old view loader. Okay, I'm old school. This is old school. Can't help it. Now, I use this view loader and this gun, and I shoot 20 miles a second. Now, I don't have a high dollar halo, a rip clip, or none of that. This rascal is like 15 bucks, and I've had it for a good while, and uh, it's very reliable in my opinion. Now, it's not the best on the market, but like I said, I'm shooting 20 miles a second with this hopper. <clears throat> now, the reason I'm talking about this hopper is because inside of this tube, there's a laser, uh, an eye, if you will. And what happens is inside this hopper, there's an agitator. And when the eye recognizes there's no ball in the feeder tube, the agitator kicks on. If I take my finger and stick up in here, you hear how that quits? I'm breaking the beam. The hopper realizes, all right, I've got a ball down in the tube. I don't need to spin. But the instant there's no ball, agitation. Okay. Your gun has the same thing right down in here. Now, if you're shooting this gun at 20 miles a second and uh, it misfires or it doesn't shoot, chances are it's not fed a ball down into the gun. Now, that's a safety feature. It's going to keep you from breaking balls. Uh, but a way to check to see if your hopper is your problem or if your gun is your problem is uh, you need to turn this marker on with the eyes off. Now, I'm going to turn the marker around. And as we all know, uh, if you just press the power button to turn the marker on, the marker is now on. We're going to flick it down into, let's go full auto. Well, nothing. You don't hear anything. That's because the eye is on and it says there's no ball in the gun. It's not going to fire. So we're going to flip it back up into safety, turn the marker off. Is that off? Okay, now the marker is off. Now, to turn this marker on and to turn the eye off, what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze and pull the trigger and then press the power button. Okay, once that's on like that, you have turned the eyes off. So you can now flick your selector switch, full auto, hear the click. Okay, now what I've done is I've turned the eye off just so I can check to see if the electronics are okay. Now, when you use this marker on the field, you're going to leave this eye on because if you turn this rascal off and go out there and start shooting 20 balls a second, you're going to break a ball. So, with that said, uh, that's the first thing I would do is I would turn my marker on by holding the trigger and pushing the power button and making sure <clears throat> that the electronics in the gun are okay. Now, if that's the case and your electronics are okay, it's probably your, your, probably your hopper and you should upgrade. Okay, so let's go ahead and discuss how to program this rascal. I'm going to go ahead and flip the gun back off and turn the power off. Okay, now you're going to hear me say cycle the selector switch. Okay, now this is in your manual and if you want to go ahead and grab that manual now, we'll discuss it. Okay, we concentrated solely on the rate of fire. Uh, now you can change any function uh, in this gun as far as um, firing modes, for example. And uh, in your manual, page 8, it'll tell you firing modes. Uh, the gun is set factory to function 5. In other words, if I turn this gun on in programming mode, and it's solid red and I pull the trigger, the light is going to blink five times, indicating that I'm in mode five, which is semi, PSP, and full auto. Now, if you want to, you can, uh, you can change this to anything, uh, semi-auto, uh, PSP, a ramping mode. Uh, I, I've not fooled with that. When you increase your rate of fire, uh, it affects your three ball burst as well. Um, I'm not much into, uh, the ramping, I've got a single trigger, I'm not going to get that fast on it to begin with, so this selector switch with full auto is perfect for me. <clears throat> now, I will say this, um, very important that when you turn this gun on, you press and hold the power button. Don't be pulling the trigger and turning it on uh, with uh, turning the eyes off, because if you do that, you will break bottles like mad. Um, not a wise thing to do. 
but um, if you have any other questions, you know, please feel free to comment. Uh, I have been asked about the stand that the gun is on. Now, this is made out of aluminum. I have taken aluminum strips and with a little bit of measuring and some drilling, I've made this to kind of work like table legs. Now, if you notice, I've got paracord down here at the bottom. And the reason I've done that is this stand is collapsible, right? It packs up, it doesn't weigh nothing. And the paracord doubles as a little carry handle or a tie down strap. But when you get to where you're going, you take this little stand, flops out like this, sets down on the ground, and your gun fits down in here like this. Now, at the front, because of the Picatinny rails and the measurement I've got, the Picatinny rails on the side rest on this stand. So this gun, that's, that's as much as it's going to wobble side to side. So when you put your hopper on there full of balls, it's not going to turn over. And, you know, plus it's just convenient that you can just take your stand and fold it up like this and pack it away in your pack. Now, if you want, I can show you a video of how to make this. Just drop me a comment. But uh, this has been programming your BTT and 15 with Vader. Uh, I hope I helped you guys out. And like I said, any questions, please feel free to comment and uh, have a good day.